and well met hero fans. It is I, your humble host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legendary adventure, and I am come before you this day that I may relate the legends of this universe and its distinguished champions. However, my first tale is anything but distinguished, dealing as it does with the diminutive denizens of a world made entirely of plastic bricks. It is the tale of a man who wears the mantle of a bat. A Lego Batman, if you will. Though perhaps not the one that you may recognise. Released direct to video in 2013, Lego Batman the Movie follows the plot of the second Lego Batman video game in which Lex Luthor and the Joker use a giant evil robot to create chaos and mayhem, all in the service of getting Lex Luthor elected to high office. Well, if it worked in one universe... Ah, but such things are beyond our scope this day. Let us instead focus upon our subject, Lego Batman the Movie. DC Superheroes Unite! It is a prestigious night in Gotham City, as the Man of the Year award is about to be announced. But there can only be one winner. Bruce Wayne! Ah, Bruce Wayne, that overcame his parents' senseless slaying and rose to become a paragon of Gotham society. Or at least, that is the tale that is known to the good and innocent people of Gotham City. That will not stop the Clown Prince of Chaos from taking the statuette and a bounty of riches for himself. Until Batman enters and pursues a fleeing Joker to the inevitable end of his caper. Oh, come on! It is at this point that Superman appears, though merely to introduce himself to our eyes rather than to actually do anything. But Lex Luthor has dark plans in motion. At this point in time, Lex Luthor is a candidate for the presidency of the United States of America. However, his campaign has not gone well, and his popularity is rather low. Luthor, to this end, has sought alternative means to increase his popularity means which would include releasing the Joker from incarceration at the Arkham Secure Facility. And a fancy new weapon to play with. Behold the Deconstructor! This clever little device emits a certain kind of energy, one that is absorbed rather rapidly by shiny black objects. So rapidly, in fact, that it severs the molecular bonds and pulls these objects asunder. And there is one certain crime fighter who only works in black. Or, on occasion, very, very dark grey. Leaving behind a mess for the Dark Knight and his apprentice to clean up. <laughs> and all but one of the inmates have been accounted for. But of course, we already know who it is that is missing. Followed by a break-in at the Ace Chemical Works. Being, of course, that the Joker is oftentimes in incarceration, he has not the means to be in possession of his famous Joker gas. Thus, whenever he is able, he must remake it anew. And it is at this point that he claims to be an artiste, though from what I have seen so far, he only works in very large self-portraits. Luckily, Superman arrives to keep our pair from a very nasty fall. But the Dark Knight is insistent that he needs no help. A man too proud to ask for assistance, especially in this world of such splendour and danger, is a fool. Batman, be not a fool. Batman attempts to catch our villains green-handed. But he did not count upon being deconstructed. Our heroes analyse the sample, which turns out to be a homing beacon, leading Luthor right to them. 
and the Joker delights in destroying all those formerly unbreakable toys. For you see, Batman keeps a secret vault of greenest kryptonite that errant Kryptonians, and even Superman himself, may yet learn that Homo sapiens of Earth is still the most dangerous prey of all. And yet, is it any coincidence that greenest kryptonite is the mineral that powers the deconstructor? No indeed, my friends. But just when things look their worst, Superman comes to the rescue once more. And stays around to clean up the remains of the Batcave. But could Lex Luthor's alliance with the Joker have a deeper and more sinister purpose? The world's finest decide to just go and ask him. Which of course goes about as well as one would expect. But shock! They switched costumes! Thus do our heroes, and villains, return to Gotham. And in a terrible twist for Lex Luthor, it is not he that the gassed masses will be voting for. It would seem, then, that the clue is in the name, Joker Gas. Perhaps if Mr Luthor had asked for Luthor Gas, he may have had more success. Then again, hindsight is the clearest sight of them all. Robin has been busy. And Batman has a plan. Enter the remainder of the Justice League, just in time to save Wayne Tower from a robotic rampage. And so our movie ends with the villain's court. And the Dark Knight learning a valuable lesson on friendship. But the story does not end here. I have located it. However, while the legend of the Lego Batman may continue, our part in this tale this day is done. Such then is the legend of Lego Batman. And I deem this tale worthy of remembrance. This is a less serious take on the great mythology of the DC Universe. Being that the DC Universe is, let us not forget, a universe of giant apes and time travel, among other things. But the sin, in my opinion, of the 60s Batman show was that it lacked the scope, the darkness, the essential dignity of a dark knight. This movie is grand enough in scope that it avoids that trap. The performances, in voice at least, are only as good as they were in the cutscenes that make up the greater part of this movie. Thankfully, these performances were entertaining enough to warrant the creation of this movie, or so DC thought. Troy Baker delivers a decent Batman, if the material makes him more curmudgeonly than truly driven. And while Travis Willingham is underused in voice for Superman, the animators more than make up for this in posture and pose. But the real standout here is Clancy Brown's Lex Luthor. In equal parts smooth malevolence, and growling frustration as he realises the greatest truth, that one should never make a deal with the Joker. Speaking of which, Christopher Corey Smith gives us a Joker that is as silly and joyously chaotic as the Joker needs to be, but lacks the menace of Mark Hamill's legendary animated Joker. Of the supporting cast, Rob Paulson's alternating quiet loud Riddler sticks in the memory, but then we'd expect nothing less. But in this animated film, the other half of the performance is in the animation, and here, TT Films have worked hard to bring genuine emotion to the faces of these characters. The pouting Joker, when he realises the consequences of finally finishing off his favourite foe. The permagrin of a Superman who doesn't realise that he's in for a close encounter with a lot of kryptonite. And of course, the cartoonish expressiveness on the masks of characters like the Riddler and Robin making you believe that these LEGO characters really are alive. And we have to mention the music. Outside of the reused elements of Elfman's iconic Batman score, and Williams' Superman march, TT's own Rob Westwood, by way of the Bratislava Symphony Orchestra, 
deliver a suitably epic musical accompaniment to the unfolding drama. If I had to pick a flaw, I would say that a pedant like myself can see where lines were spliced to use in one scene, or where a character hadn't needed dialogue in the cutscenes of the game, they received none here. But this is a greatly pedantic nitpick, on what is at best a very minor issue. No, this movie, spawned from what I consider to be the high point of the LEGO DC subseries, is a fantastic family adventure which isn't too scary for the kiddies, and isn't bereft of parental bonus. And the moral of the story is clear, there are times when we could all use a little help from our friends. And with these words I direct you to the greatest of sights, the subscription button, and its scintillating sidekick, the notification bell icon. Also, if you would be my hero, you will find in the sacred text below the path to my financial salvation, or, in your language, crowdfunding. I shall return in seven days hence to guide you unto the new frontier. Until that time, I remain your humble host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend, and I bid you, dear viewer, good day.